Hello. Uh, I'm back. Um, and I'd like to do uh, something I think is a little unorthodox, but I think it could work. I'm gonna, first, I'm gonna, uh, well, basically, it's gonna be a two part video, this being part one. And um, I'm gonna talk to you about lucid dreaming today. And after I basically describe what lucid dreaming is, in this video, give you a nice rundown. Um, my next video will be a video you can listen to while you're falling asleep. And the idea would be that while listening to this video, you'll have a higher chance of uh, having a lucid dream that night. Okay? <laughs> now, um, I have <laughs> this is a piece of paper I've taped to a pillow. Um, yeah, so this is it, and it is, uh, a list of the topics I'm going to be going over tonight that, uh, you know, are relevant and, uh, pertinent to lucid dreaming and what my next video is going to be. Uh, if you can't tell, I, uh, am a little sick, and I've lost my voice, and the last couple of days I've been like this, but. So I'm going to do a lot more uh, whispering than uh, soft speaking, because my soft speaking voice is, uh, well, it's, it's uh, I can't, I don't really even have one. Like, uh, this would be me trying to do a soft speak, <coughs> so I can't really even get a grasp on it. It's, I have to go to a regular uh, speaking voice to have it sound clear. So, um. As a whispering video, and I, I know a lot of people like whispering, a lot of people like soft speaking. So that this video will just cater to the whisper ones, I guess. Okay, so on my list um, that I've so expertly taped into this pillow, uh, I have. Oh man, that's written backwards in my camera. Well, um, <laughs> it says, "What is a lucid dream?" A lucid dream, <laughs> that's a good question, uh, a lucid dream is a dream in which you're aware of the fact that you're dreaming. It's that simple. So you'll be asleep in a dream, you know, uh, fighting some pirates or something, whatever you dream about, and uh, you'll just kind of realize, like, hey, this doesn't make any sense. Am I dreaming? And you just realize, man, this is totally a dream. I'm not awake. And bam, you're in a lucid dream. You're now aware of the fact that you're dreaming. You have that kind of just new understanding of it, basically. Like you're gaining perspective on what's actually happening. As opposed to just playing your dream out like a robot. So what that means is you can start doing whatever you want, basically. And obviously, since it's not real life, um, you can learn to be able to just control the dream however you'd like. You can just be wherever you want, you know, Paris or Rome. Uh, you can, uh, the, the laws of nature don't exist. You can jump around and fly and uh, teleport and lift whatever you want or whatever. And uh, the laws of, you know, society don't exist. So you can, um, you know, rob people and do whatever illegal thing that you want to do that doesn't matter, you know, just like, do whatever you want. So, it's, um, it's pretty great. You get to just live your little dream out for 10 or 20 minutes and, uh, just do whatever it, while knowing that none of it's real, none of it matters. So, yeah, that's what a lucid dream is. Now, the other thing I wrote on my little piece of paper here pertaining to, uh, what is a lucid dream is, uh, realism. What I mean by realism, <coughs> uh, excuse me, is that the, and the reason that, you, that every dream is not a lucid dream is because the dreams are like brutally real, very realistic. Um, once you realize you're dreaming for the first time, it's going to be hard to, even once you've like 
questioned it and I come to the conclusion that you're dreaming, it's going to be hard to believe because everything, contrary to popular belief, is like really, really realistic. Like you'll realize you're dreaming, say you're in your house, you, excuse me, <laughs> and you uh, start looking around like uh, at the floor, at your carpet, and you can do like all of your senses. You can feel the carpet, you can look at the carpet, you can smell the carpet. All of it is just like in real life. Like it, it it's amazing. It is amazing, and that makes it. Accept that you're dreaming because it's 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 tough to get around that a dream like you can be imagining something so realistic and uh, there are philosophical dilemmas with that as well <laughs> if, if you care to explore those but um, that is outside the scope of this video now I'm gonna move on I guess uh, what do we got here okay the, I'll show you, because I, you know, this is tough to use in the video, but I did spend 10 minutes or so coming up with this list, so I, you know, I want to use it, <laughs> even if I'm now realizing it's kind of silly. So, here we go. Uh, number two, dream journal. Okay, and, you know, I'm actually realizing since I can't read this in the video reflection, I bet you can't either. Is it backwards for you? It probably is. So, um, yeah, so this is Dream Journal written backwards, I think. <laughs> it might not be. I'm gonna say it is, though, because I don't think my phone flips videos around. I know it flips pictures around, but I don't know it will do videos. So, okay, my backwards list here says Dream Journal next. Um, now, the reason behind a Dream Journal is people don't remember all of their dreams. And that's like a... That's a mechanism built into us. Uh, I think the uh, general theory behind that is if we remembered all of our dreams, we would have a hard time remembering whether or not things happened or didn't happen. So you have like a night's worth of dreams and then in your regular life something comes up and you had a dream about it and you remember it, you're not necessarily going to remember or you'll, you possibly will be confused as to whether or not this thing actually happened. So we're kind of programmed to just forget the dreams after they happen. We use the dreams to develop um, our ability to cope with real life situations and then our subconscious remembers that and then our regular, whatever the thing is that isn't subconscious, I didn't go to college so spare me, <laughs> um, that will forget about it. Okay, <laughs> so um, yeah, the idea of a dream journal is record your dreams best as you can, and over time you will be better at recalling those dreams. So maybe like the first week you can get like one dream a night, maybe one of the nights you remember two or three, then in the second week you'll kind of be picking up a bit more, and then over time you'll just be remembering three or four dreams a night with really good detail. And the reason you want to do this is other, you'll, you'll start distinguishing dream life and real life better, like, they'll be different, therefore you'll kind of recognize, oh, I'm dreaming, you know, more easily, and more importantly, or just as importantly, you will not have a lucid dream and then completely forget about it. There's <laughs> nothing worse, I would imagine, than having a lucid dream that you totally enjoy and blah blah blah, and then you don't even remember it because you just forget your dreams. That's probably lame, but I wouldn't know because I, for all I know, I've remembered all of my lucid dreams, but obviously I probably don't. Uh, okay, <laughs> so, uh, sorry, I've, uh, I'm talking into this microphone and it keeps kind of floating under my shirt. And I don't know if that's making it so you can't hear me. So I keep pulling it up. <laughs> uh, I'm using my iPhone because the video is better than my iPad. So I'm not getting my microphone from my iPad, which I think is decent. So instead I'm settling for phone for the video quality with microphone for the audio quality. Because this microphone is a lot better than my iPhone speaker. 
uh, microphone, I mean, though it's still not great, probably, I don't know. The only microphones I can find that seem like I would want to use them are like over $100 on Amazon, and uh, it's a lot of money. <laughs> okay, so, number three on my list here uh, of backwards things is, what does that say, reality checks, yeah. It's hard to read backwards, huh? This is a tutorial for reading backwards. Not a tutorial, but a practice lesson. Okay, <laughs> anyway, uh, a reality check is something you do as a test to see if you are dreaming or not, or if you're awake. Whatever, it doesn't matter. So, uh, there's, a, there's all kinds of different ones. So I'll just tell you the ones I use, or the ones that I think you could use that I don't use, but so I think the most popular one that I don't use is hands. So you just want to look at your hands. So I have ten fingers, right? <laughs> now in a dream, I might have less or more. Um, if you're dreaming and you look at your hands, they're very um, out of focus or they'll be kind of your fingers will move around, or you'll have less fingers than you should, or more fingers than you should, or like one hand will kind of adapt more fingers than the other, so they should be changing around, and it's really, it's really creepy. <laughs> and that is the primary reason I do not use this reality check, because it is weird. Um, and I don't know why, but that it's like everyone, there's a lot of things that happen in dreams that everyone experiences. And I'll get into that a little bit more, but Another example would be mirrors. Everyone can go through a, like a, a mirror, like say you have like a body mirror, you can just walk through it in a dream. And you'll, it'll uh, transport you to another random location. Or with practice, you can do it to a specific location that you desire. Um, and that's, that's another thing that just happens to everyone for some reason. Or, yeah, and that is weird, right? Because it's not like mirrors are just existing in nature, but everyone has somehow adapted the ability to do that in dreams. Whatever that means. <laughs> Again, philosophy can come into this. But, uh, so, oh, the reality checks, right? Now, uh, so there's the hands, and people like that, you just look at your hands. Now, and the idea with the reality check is you want to, several times a day, remember to do a reality check. It's not like... You just are aware of your hands and suddenly you kind of, you have to like specifically be like, oh, am I dreaming? So you want to pose the question, am I dreaming? Several times a day. And in response to the question, am I dreaming? You will want to perform one or preferably more reality checks. I, I usually do two. Well, eh, one or two. I usually do one to be honest, but it's because I think it works really well. So the one I do is... And I do this when I'm not with people, because you don't want to look crazy. <laughs> but uh, I plug my nose, and then I try to breathe through my nose. And the theory behind this is because you're plugging your nose. If you were dreaming, you're not actually plugging your nose, so you can still breathe through your nose. So I'll plug my nose, and I'll try to breathe through it, with my mouth closed, obviously. And if I can breathe, I'm dreaming, and if I cannot breathe, I am awake. And that works for me just all the time, so that is my go-to one. Now, if I am going to do a second one, it will be to look at a clock, and then look away from the clock. So this would be like a, it has to be an analog clock, not, uh, sorry, it has to be a digital clock, not an analog clock. And I don't know why this is, but analog clock don't work because you just see it's got to be like it's the position is easy to remember or something um, or it like gets stored in your mind easier something happens where you see you know the position and that is still the position when you look back but with digital clocks you look at like your watch for example and it says uh, 633 and then you look away and then you look back at your watch it's gonna say a different time so that's how that works.
clocks. If you look at your clock, this is 6.33, you look away, you look back, and it says 11.15. You know you're dreaming, because that makes no sense. Now, and, and what's cool is it's not even always a time. It actually almost never is. So you'll look, it'll say 6.33, you'll look away, you look back, and it'll be like an ampersand, and a plus sign, and a percent symbol. Which makes absolutely no sense. So you just know you're dreaming. And it, the same goes for text. If you read like a sentence off of a piece of mail or something, you can look away and then look back. And if it has changed, you are dreaming. Okay. So the idea is just to question whether you're This is an uh, acronym, which stands for Mnemonic Initiated or Induced, I'm not sure which. They both mean the same thing. So, Mnemonic Initiated Lucid Dream. Now, um, a, a mnemonic basically being something that uh, you remember from some other thing that you say. So, uh, you want to remember that you're dreaming, and you want to be saying something as you fall asleep. So, you want to basically recite a mantra as you're falling asleep, just over and over and over and over and over again. And then once you do fall asleep, the idea is, you will later, while you're dreaming, remember that you were dreaming. And this kind of works the same way other things like that. As you're falling asleep, you can kind of just tell yourself that you need to wake up at 7 o'clock. And somehow your body and mind just kind of, once 7 o'clock rolls around, remembers, oh, I need to wake up, and then you wake up. So it's kind of like that. So as you're falling asleep, you want to say something like, the next thing I experience is going to be a dream. I'm going to perform a reality check, and then I'm going to enter a lucid dream. And then you want to keep saying those three lines as you're laying in bed, gradually falling asleep. You want to say those a bunch of times. Now, if you're very tired, you can say them until you fall asleep. But if you're not so tired, you can just say the line like 20 times and then call it good and then fall asleep at your own pace. But you do want to try to say it as you are falling asleep. So maybe say it 20 times. Then later, you'll realize, oh man, I'm pretty tired, I might be falling asleep soon. Then say it, you know, 20 more times and try to get it, you know, right up until you fall asleep is how it works best. Now, if you do this, you are going to see a wild increase in lucid dreams. Like, you probably have never even had one. Or if you did have one, you probably did when you were a small child. Because I think most people have them when they're kids and then stop having them. That's actually how I found out about it. I was reading a Reader's Digest or something when I was in high school, and uh, I remember having one when I was a kid, and that's what got me interested in it. And then uh, I actually did my senior project on lucid dreaming, which is, uh, in high school when you're a senior, you need to do a project. Uh, at my school, obviously not everyone, um, but it's a 45-minute project uh, presentation on a topic that you get pre-approved by four faculty members. And then you have a panel of people watch you as you present, and then they grade you on it. And you uh, have to pass, and if you don't pass, you have to do it again. And uh, what was annoying is most people have to do it again, because they really kind of try to screw you on it. It's really frustrating. I didn't have to do mine twice, but um, I'm awesome, obviously. So, <laughs> as expected. But, <laughs> anyway... Uh, joking aside, the next technique after mnemonic induced lucid dreams or whatever would be a, a wild, which is a weak initiated lucid dream. Now let me uh, show you on my reverse pillow here. Ow. Uh, so we got wild. See? And then something under it. What does that say? No. Oh, gotcha. Imagery. And that's important as well, actually, for the mnemonic one. 
So anyway, awake initiated lucid dream is basically you go from being awake to being asleep without ever losing consciousness, like, which is like awareness. So you'll be awake, you'll be very aware of everything that's happening. then your uh, body is going to fall asleep and you'll then but you're still conscious and aware of what's happening you're aware your body fell asleep you can feel that it's paralyzed just laying there in bed or on a couch whatever and then you're gonna your, your mind is gonna transform into a dream and you'll be conscious of the whole process and then once you're in you don't have to be in a dream unconsciously and then realize you're dreaming later. You go straight from being awake right into a dream. The only, and this is the best way to do lucid dreams, but the only downfall is it is not easy. Um, it's very hard. <laughs> Basically what happens, what goes wrong, is you will fall asleep and, and lose consciousness. And that's completely ruins the whole thing. And that happens a lot. It's really hard to not do that. So, in order to combat that, what you need to do is you need to sleep for, um, like, three or four sleep cycles, which are 90 minutes long, um, each. And once you have slept for those, and you have, like, an alarm set, basically, to wake you up after them, you wake up, and you want to try to stay awake for 15, 30, 45 minutes, um, and then you want to fall back asleep somewhere that is not your bed or not where you usually sleep. So on a couch, in a guest room, in the basement, just wherever. And then you want to focus on hypnagogic imagery. So you're laying on your couch, for example, and you're falling back asleep, you're getting sleepy, and you feel your body, it's all nice and relaxed, you're very tingly. You want to close your eyes and you want to focus on the back of your eyelids, your eyes are closed, you're very sleepy, and you just picture, or you don't even need to picture anything, just images will be floating on the back of your eyelids. There'll be like lights flashing, or squiggly lines, or shapes kind of coming in and out of focus, floating around. This is hypnagogic imagery. Now, I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but that doesn't matter. So, as you get more and more into your sleep state, um, your body will be coming more and more asleep, and uh, these images will become more and more pronounced, and in the end, the images will actually be the dream. Like, they'll become more and more vivid until it is a total landscape and a dream, and you will kind of all at once go into the dream. It'll be like stepping through a portrait, or it could be more aggressive. Uh, where you'll experience a lot of like over sen like sensory overload, very loud noises, sharp visual images, and uh, it can be frightening for some people, but it's totally not. It's not dangerous. Something is actually happening. And anyway, when that is over, you'll be in the dream, kind of all at once. Now, and this all happens basically right when your body becomes paralyzed, and uh, which is uh, it's called sleep paralysis. Basically, your brain paralyzes your body. Um, so when you are dreaming, you don't act out the dream, like you're not actually getting up and running around, like, because you're paralyzed, you can't move, and, um, uh, I will warn you that a side effect of lucid dreaming that doesn't happen often, but it does happen, is, uh, you'll wake up, and you will, your body will, will unparalyze itself for a little while, so you'll be awake, but your body will still be paralyzed from being asleep and dreaming and uh it, what the side effect being you can't move and also you're prone to hallucinations so it, it, people get worked up by this they'll become like overly terrified they'll be they'll hallucinate like uh something killing them <laughs> or ghosts and they can't move and uh people get really freaked out but all you need to do is you wake up you're paralyzed still you just realize what's happening just calm down, you know, take some deep breaths, and you'll become unparalyzed in a matter of seconds, like 30 seconds, it's no big deal. The idea is, is you just need 
can't panic. Like the second you start panicking is when you start imagining worst case scenarios, which is when you start hallucinating worst case scenarios. So don't do that. And don't let this put you off to the whole idea of lucid dreaming. This is like a really small chance of that happening. And also when it does happen, it is not a big deal. Like don't make it a big deal. <laughs> That's the thing is people can make it into a big deal, which does make it a big deal. Basically when you're dreaming, with anything you are afraid of happening or you think is going to happen happens so just don't like realize that it's not going to happen like uh some guy I remember uh, somebody proposed like uh that if you say your name while you're dreaming you'll immediately wake up and then this other guy who kind of pioneered this dreaming was like that makes no sense and so he was like in a dream he was like a lucid dream he's like okay my name is Stephen. I am Stephen. And he didn't wake up because he realized that basically that whole principle. If you think something's going to happen, it happens. So this guy thought if he says his name, he's going to wake up. And then lo and behold, he says his name in a lucid dream and he wakes up. And this other guy, Stephen uh, Lamberg or something, I don't remember his last name. Uh, it's like, no, that's ridiculous. I know that's not true. And he proved that it's not. So basically you just have to realize that this stuff doesn't need to happen. In fact, I probably kind of shouldn't have brought that up because it probably wouldn't even have been an issue unless you were aware of it. So my bad. <laughs> but anyway, I know you're smart enough to realize that should not enter anything and you totally can go forth with this and it'll be great. So the last thing on my list is, uh, well, that's not right. Here we go. Uh, is that? Oh, it's still not right. Now it's upside down. Okay, now it's right. Oh, what does that say? Dream? Prolonging dreams. Cool. So now, you're asking, okay, I'm lucid dreaming like crazy now, but I keep waking up. What do I do? So say you're dreaming, and you uh, kind of feel like you're waking up. There are two ways that I know of that you can keep the dream going. One, you spin in a circle. as fast as you can, excuse me, uh, and what the idea is you overstimulate your senses, and it keeps your subconscious from realizing that you're not actually awake, and then waking you up, because it gets convinced that you are still awake, because uh, all of your senses are being stimulated, uh, so aggressively, so you spin around, and all of, like the colors, and So say you're where you want to be, and then you start spinning. There's a good chance once you stop spinning, you won't be there anymore. You'll be, like, at your friend's house, or in a different country, or on the moon. <laughs> so you gotta watch out for that. Now, if you don't want to have to worry about that, uh, because you are where you want to be, for example, you can do, uh, and this works slightly less, but still works, you should rub your hands together aggressively. And you feel the heat from the friction, and that convinces your brain that this is real life because you're feeling heat and friction and all that good stuff. Again, you're stimulating the senses. Okay, so that is how that works. And uh, one parting thing is I mentioned earlier, mirrors can uh, get you to a different place as well. So if you want to get out of wherever you are, you find a mirror, you hop through it, you'll be somewhere else. Or, like I just said a second ago, you can spin around in a circle, and a lot of the time you will end up somewhere else. Okay. So, have fun with your lucid dreaming. Uh, hopefully the next video helps you get into one. But also, the information I just gave you, if you put all that into practice, that should get you into some lucid dreams of your own, without needing any help. So, have fun, uh, you know, hanging out with movie stars, and uh, flying around, and all that jazz. <laughs> and, uh, I look forward to comments on people who were able to successfully have a lucid dream and, you know, what you guys did and, uh, your comments on how crazy real dreams are compared to real life. Not like compared to real life, but, uh, in relation
relation to real life. They're very realistic. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, this is my first video, and I'm going to be making another one that hopefully will get you guys going. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take me to put that video together and then put it online. But it should be coming. Uh, okay. Uh, have a good night.